Welcome to the Path to Mindset Mastery. My name is Brad Bizjak. I'm a mindset strategist and coach, inspirational speaker, and creator of Appreciation Academy. And I help online business owners silence all the negative self-talk holding you back so you can finally see the success that you deserve. And today is all about energy management. In fact, I'm going to show you ways to have more energy on demand so you can feel energy whenever you want, even if it's not just like natural. So as I'm filming this, I have a really bad stomach bug, stabbing pains throughout my body, 101 degree fever, it's not fun, was up all last night getting sick, not a great time. But how do I manage my energy like this so I can show up and deliver, have a smile on my face and actually mean it and perform at a high level with everything that's going on? Or think about someone like, like Michael Jordan in the NBA, NBA Finals playing with the flu and having one of his highest scoring games of all time. How is that possible? How is it possible to have so much energy even though your body's not uh, feeling very well? How is that possible? Or how is it possible to have a ton of energy after you get to, uh, if you don't get any sleep? Or if you go to a concert with your friends after pulling an all-nighter, how do you have that energy? That's what we're going to talk about today because so many people fall victim to the minds of the, that their energy is out of their control. And I'm here to tell you that it's not true. This is an exciting podcast episode because it's truly one of the main things that I do to operate my life. And I've been asked all the time, like time and time again, actually, dude, how the hell are you so damn happy all the time, regardless of what's going on? Or how do you have so much energy? And the reason is because you get to pick how you live every day. If you've been operating from a, a place of life controlling you instead of you controlling your life, then chances are, then when people ask you how you're doing, you respond with, well, I'm okay, or I'm tired, or I'm busy, right? Well, think about that. If you respond with, I'm okay, or I'm tired, or I'm busy, what does that give off to other people? Does it actually make them feel that you're someone they want to be around? No. Yawn, right? So when you can see your life as a gift, and every breath you take as a miracle, all of a sudden, you get a lot more energy, and it's pretty amazing. But if you don't feel regular energy, chances are... You're living your life trying to protect yourself from things going wrong, correct? Well, here's the thing. Energy is a choice. And there's two ways to control how you feel on a second-to-second -second basis. And I learned these from my mentor, Tony Robbins. The first is your physiology, and the second is your focus. Physiology and focus. If you take control of those two things, your life changes forever. So what's important to understand is food... Uh, water, sleep, all that stuff absolutely plays a role in your long-term sustainable energy. 100%. I'm not going against nutrition, all that stuff. What I'm saying is you can turn it on when you want. So why is it the case that physiology and your focus dictate how you feel? Well, let's start with physiology. Emotion is energy in motion. So if you ever want to feel differently, one of the best ways to change, one of the best ways to do that is to change your physical state. That can be a workout, that can be jumping jacks, that can be laughter, that can be something as simple as jumping in the air and giving yourself a, a high five over your head. The list goes on. But physiology is one of the most important ways to feel more energy whenever you want. So let me ask you a question. Where does energy come from? What does your gut tell you? Does it come from food? Does it come from sleep? Does it come from recharging? No. Like, of course, those things play a role. But energy is something you do. And sure, if you want long-term sustainable energy, you'll need to eat healthy and get your rest for sure. But I'm talking about turning it on when you need to. Energy is something you do. It is a choice. One of the best ways to take full responsibility for your life is to realize that you are in control of your energy. So do me a favor. Just try this. Play all out with me. Close your eyes. And assess your energy, close your eyes and assess your energy on a scale of 1 to 10 right now. Where would you rate yourself? 1 is horrible energy, 10 is amazing energy. Rate yourself right now. With your eyes closed, where's your energy? Maybe you're a 6. Well, wherever you're at, assess it. Now, I want you to imagine with your eyes closed, imagine a memory from your past where you were just so freaking pumped up. Maybe it's before a big concert. Maybe it's when you were about to uh, walk onto that football field. Maybe it's when you were at your annual convention for your company. Maybe it's when you were about to go on a roller coaster. Maybe it's when you were about to teach a fitness class. What's that for you? What's that thing for you where you were just so pumped up? And I want you to go there and feel it. Don't just see that memory from the outside. Relive getting excited for that memory. Same breath pattern, heavy. Heavy breath pattern, fast breathing, breathe the same way, breathe it right now, like actually with your eyes closed right now, feel it, feel the energy you need to deliver in that moment. Put your shoulders back, feel the energy surge throughout your body right now, like this lightning bolt of energy has struck you and took your number from six, adding three more points to a nine or 10. How would you breathe if your energy was a nine or 10 right now? Are you up out of your chair? How do you feel? And surge it up even more and feel it and breathe it and live it and open your eyes. What do you feel? Let me guess, 
more energy. You feel more energy. You didn't change how much you slept last night. You didn't change what you had for breakfast this morning. You made a fucking choice to bring energy to this podcast episode. You made a choice to have more energy. And what's so cool is that if you create enough of it, you can feel happiness at any moment in time. You can be the person that other people look at and feel your energy without you even saying a word. How would your life change if that's what you did? The good news is you just learned one of the major ways to do that. You change your physiology, your breathing pattern, right? So now let me show you a way to decrease your energy at any moment. And by the way, if you're ever depressed or sad or worried or anxious, chances are you're doing the following with your body. So, okay, now put your shoulders more slouched, chin down, and then eyes down, slow your breathing down and just talk really quiet and just kind of put yourself in a worried state for a second. What do you feel? When you're in a tense state of worry. Not very good. Less energy, right? Because energy is something you do. If you're in a state of depression, you're slouched all the way down on the couch feeling crappy, scrolling your phone all the time, wishing life would change, but you're not feeling like you're in control of your life whatsoever. So my point is really simple. If you ever want to change your energy level in a moment and change how you feel in any moment, change your body. Get up and move. Take the dog for a walk. Do jumping jacks. Go work out. Have sex. All of it is a state change. Does this make sense? Your energy is a choice. I'm sitting here with a 101 degree fever filming this uh, podcast episode and my energy is through the roof right now because it is a choice. But what about the second way to change your energy? Equally as powerful. And this is changing your focus. When you're pissed off, where is your focus going? To what's wrong or what's right? To what's wrong. When you're worried or fearful, where's your focus going? To your blessings or what could go wrong? Anxiety about what could go wrong is a mostly unnecessary state caused by focusing on things that haven't happened yet and having the desperate need for control of your life. But something I've learned throughout my success journey is that you can control what you do in your life, but you're not actually in control of your life. So wherever focus goes, energy flows. So if you focus on something more empowering, your life will change in an instant. So let's use the example of having this pretty gnarly stomach bug right now. I could focus on how it sucks. I could focus on how my body feels and it being stabbing pins and needle pain throughout my body. I could focus on how I got zero sleep last night. I was up all night yakking and I'm exhausted. Or I could focus on how I have people to serve. And one of them is you right now. And that message is more important than any sickness I could have. I have too much I have too many things in this life to create and serve and give than to even be worried about being sick right now. Which of those two focuses, focusing on how I don't have energy because I'm sick or focusing on how I have people to serve, which of those will bring me more energy? Obviously the latter. So there are a couple ways to change your focus that I'd like to walk you through. Number one, first, gratitude. Write this down. Gratitude is the cure-all. Because it's literally impossible to feel emotional pain when you're deeply grateful. You cannot feel anxiety, depression, sadness, anger, resentment, jealousy, envy, any of it when you are in a deep state of gratitude. Like imagine anxiety and depression going away forever. If you live in a constant state of genuine, and I say genuine gratitude, like consistently, you will not feel that. So you can't feel a painful emotion and gratitude simultaneously. It's impossible. True gratitude though. Because a lot of people will bullshit their way into gratitude. This can't be bullshit gratitude where you pretend you're being grateful just to reward your disempowering story that it's harder for you and that the gratitude stuff doesn't actually work. Genuine gratitude eliminates all pain in a single second. When you go into a state of genuine gratitude, your focus changes completely to what's wrong, from what's wrong to what's right. So that's number one, genuine gratitude. Number two, second, act how you want to feel. A lot of people, when I bring this point up, a lot of people say, Brad, that's just faking it. No, it's facing it. If you act how you want to feel, you're going to start to think that way. You're going to think with energy. So uh, think enthusiasm, for example. Like, what do you feel when you think about enthusiasm, jumping up and down, getting excited, pumped up? It makes you become enthusiastic. Your mindset is not fixed. It's not things, it's not based on things that happen around you. Your life is made up of events and the meaning you give to each event. It's on you to change it, totally on you. But just the word mindset alone implies that it's something that you set. So tell your mind how you want to feel. Your attitude is so much more important than the amount of sleep you get you got last night or more important than a sickness. And I get that you don't want to. I get that when you're in a down state, you want to stay down. Trust me, I lived it. Then when you're in that way and in that state, make yourself do it. 
If you go and stand in front of the mirror with your shoulders back, chest up, huge insane smile with some laughter in front of the mirror, hands on your hips like Superman or uh, Wonder Woman, if you do that and change your physiology in that way and change your focus in that way, it is physically impossible for your mood to not improve. I forget the exact stats, but your, your cortisol level goes down like something like 20 to 30% if you stand like that for two minutes. So your cortisol is your stress hormone. Energy is a choice. I'm just showing you many, many examples. And also you have to life up everything you do. That's number three, life up everything you do. Everything, your handshake, your smile, your words, your uh, emphasis on how you speak, your thank yous. Hyperbole becomes your friend here. And people will say to me all the time, but Brad, you're just bullshitting. No, I'm commanding my brain to feel better. And if people are asking, how am I so annoyingly happy all the time, Brad, you don't face it. Positivity is just a load of bullshit. You can't be positive with all these things going on. Yes, you can. Positivity doesn't mean you don't have challenges. Positivity means you control your emotional state while solving your challenges. That's high. That's positivity. Hyperbole is not fake. It's commanding your brain how you want to feel. So what's better and more welcoming? A limp fish handshake or a firm handshake with a smile that says, hey, I'm really glad to meet you. Or what's better, leaving a 15% tip because your steak was a little cold or leaving a 25-30% tip and writing the words thank you and making a memory out of something that could be so simple with a big smiley face on the receipt. What makes you feel better? What's better, a little smirk that says, mm, I'm sad about everything, or smiling with your teeth and your eyes. What's better? What's better, a, a quick thanks when deep down you're more focused on, on how your delivery was late, or seriously, thank you so much for this. It was so nice of you to bring this by. How's your day going? Right, so what's better, saying, I'm okay, I'm fine, or you know what, I'm fantastic, I'm amazing. How does it make other people feel? How does it make you feel? You are commanding your brain to feel differently. It's not about faking your way to happiness. It's about commanding yourself to feel more happy so you're more resourceful in all parts of life. Your job from now on is to pour vitality into everything you do. Enthusiasm or lack of enthusiasm shows up in everything. This includes your job, this includes your business. Think about it. When you meet someone, does that person actually think that you're glad to see them? Or do they think you're just part of the walking dead going through life? And by the way, 99% of people don't agree with me. And that's okay. That's okay. But ask yourself this question. Are most people happy? Are most people successful? Do most people have what they want? So why the hell would you listen to them? Right? We want to act like the people that have what we want. And that's what I did to change my life. I took a look at the people that had what I wanted. And I started thinking, believing, acting that way. This is stuff, all this stuff I'm teaching you, by the way, is stuff I've learned from other people, my personal growth mentors. I did not create all this. This is stuff that I have learned through studying and growth and periods of time where I've changed my life from being down to feeling alive. So I realized that those people had what I want and all the people giving me advice in my life didn't have what I want. It's like taking financial advice from your broke uncle. It doesn't make sense. So listen to the people that have what you want because they're playing life differently. See where the masses are going, how they handle their body and their focus, and sprint the other way. You don't want to be part of the walking dead. Find a happy and successful person who seems dead inside when you meet them. It's literally impossible. They don't exist. So start listening to people that have that type of energy, that type of positivity, that type of enthusiasm. It's time to start coloring your words and actions with good news and positive feeling, even hyperbole. It's time to pour vitality into everything you do so you command your brain to feel better and more energy. When you do these two main points today, change your physiology and change your focus. When you do those, your life changes very, very quickly because you'll realize that you're literally in control of how you feel. You're not in control of your whole life, but you are in control of how you go through life. You are in control of how you feel. And if you don't believe me, that's okay. I faced a point in my life where suffering felt good too. But I'm telling you, something better exists. So if any part of this makes sense to you and you're resisting it in some way and you're going, how can that be possible? Give it a shot. Listen to people that have what you want. Listen to people that have high energy, have positivity. It'll change your world. If you're going to be here on this earth 
at least be happy and enjoy the experience because you get one shot. Most people go through life lugging their body around, never feeling fully alive. You can feel fully alive every second of every day. You just need to realize that you're literally in control of how you feel. If you've been doing all the things but not getting ahead and you don't know why, it's because of your emotional state. It's inner conflict. It's you feeling negativity when life is amazing all around you. It's you living in scarcity instead of abundance, realizing that your life is fantastic now before you have the things. You could do all the right strategies in the world all day long, but if you don't have the energy to go with it, of course people aren't going to join you. Of course the strategies won't work because success, success is 80% psychology and 20% the how-to. So I hope you took a lot out of this podcast today. Do me a favor. Head to iTunes, give it a rating and review. Share this podcast episode. Put it in your Instagram stories with the reason why people should listen. Let's get more people feeling amazing because it's literally a choice that most people don't even realize they have. So thank you so much for tuning into the Path to Mindset Mastery today. My name is Brad Bizjak. Go out there today and every day and live your life with a genuine smile on your face because you now know how to cultivate the energy to make it happen. I'll see you next week.